Hello, welcome to our discussion. So the only reason we would want to use the mics, the only reason we'd want to use the mics is um, for recording on the internet and doing a simulcast and then having this be accessible to future generations who are curious what we talked about. So if we want that to happen, then uh, we can pass the mics around. That is also true. So welcome, everyone. I'm Anna. I'm Chinmay. And this is... And I'm Bilal. Okay. So we are a part of this group called Ananse. Uh, we are a diversified group of makers from around the world. She's from San Francisco. I'm from India. And he, I don't know where he's from because he keeps traveling all around. <laughs> so we put together... Um, we are working in different parts of the world with makers around the world, and um, we thought it would be interesting to come here and talk about how makers around the world work and how we could collaborate with one another, uh, do some interesting stuff. And that's where we propose the Sutra of Innovation Spaces, where the Sutra is a thread in Hindi or Sanskrit, so which means binding all of us together. And that's what we hope to achieve through this session. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our work, and I will talk a little bit of our work. Then we'll talk. Uh, so then we'll talk about each other's cultural pers perspectives in terms of maker spaces. So I know that um, people in other countries or uh, other parts of the world have different perspective of maker or hacker initiatives. So we will do a short discussion about that. Then we'll talk about how. Uh, what would all of us need and how we could collaborate. This is what we planned. Is it good uh, with all of you? Cool. One slight recommendation, just because we're so few, just to um, help us with our planning and um, making space for people, just understanding where people come from, maybe they run a space, um, why they're interested in coming and joining this. And we can just do a really quick one minute each, uh, pass the mic around in the beginning. Yeah. We'll do that when we are talking about culture perspectives. Yeah. So I'll begin. Hello. Um, I grew up in San Francisco and thereabouts. Got involved with the Fab Lab community when I was an undergraduate at MIT. Um, Fab Labs, a lot of people like to call themselves Fab Labs, but the official definition, and this is not really enforced at all, um, is a space that's part of the International Fab Lab Network, which was conceptualized by a professor named Neil Gershenfeld at MIT, whose lab is trying to build the Star Trek replicator. And about 12 years ago, they got a research grant from the National Science Foundation, which is US government money. Um, and part of this grant was public outreach. And so they thought, how will we take our you know, nanoscale molecular fabrication research and bring that to the public. What they decided was to create a sort of public library that's filled with all of the equipment that one would need to, quote, make pretty much anything. So they created this in a um, community technology space in a poorer part of Boston. And um, then soon after created one in India, one in Ghana, a couple other ones around the world. And then this idea exploded and that have created its own network that was somewhat separate from the track of the hackerspaces movement. And so if you'd like to be a Fab Lab, go to, or you'd like to see Fab Labs in your community who may or may not be connected to the rest of the hacker community, you can go to fablabs.io and see the map of them. So I work with the Fab Lab community um, and I'm also working with Autodesk and Instructables looking at what the global impact of this, quote, maker movement um, could be. So that is, that is my interest in the space. Um, I studied physics as an undergraduate and then fell into all of this kind of sideways and look forward to hearing. Well, uh, speak a little bit of Anansi. I, I think uh, we should talk about the work that is what is innovation spaces and maker spaces. I'm sorry, I'm moderating a little. Sure. sure. So because we want to, uh, um, like to define the spaces because there, uh, people are uh, 
familiar with hacker spaces, but not so much with the rest of the spaces that are existing. So I, I think that would make more sense to talk about. Sure. So just quickly, and then we'll go around and everyone introduces themselves. Um, one of the projects that I've been working on, you can kind of see it here, is a global map of innovation spaces. De um, defined innovation spaces as community-based um, workshops that are that have a focus on technology that are not necessarily open to the public but are open to collaborating with other initiatives um, and so these could include things like university incubators which are closed to everyone except university students and people who get accepted but if you approach them with an excellent project um, they might want to get involved with you and what you're doing um, or things like uh, appropriate technology spaces started in the 70s and 80s in um, London, West Africa, India, a couple other countries um, and regions where the idea was to create a bunch, bring a bunch of tools into um, the informal sector. So people by the side of the road who are hacking together vehicles or agricultural implements and provide a space for them to come in and innovate um, and also train people in new technologies like um, how to make beehives and promote beekeeping in places where people like honey but tend to just burn down the bee, the beehive when they see it and try and collect whatever's left. But instead you can teach domestication of bees. So this was an initiative in an appropriate technology space in Ghana, which is still running today um, with a minimal amount of government funding and they have no idea about the global hacker community I've been in touch with them a little bit. Um, they might be interested in collaborations, but there are a lot of spaces like this that were started a while ago that could kind of be maker spaces or hacker spaces, but aren't at all connected to the global movement. So what we were doing is we made maps of all of the spaces. So I mapped out um, Afri the African continent, more focused on sub-Saharan Africa with um, some help from a friend of ours, Juliet Wanyuri, who couldn't make it because she's in Nairobi. And then with Chinmay and our friend Paul Anand, we mapped out India. And you can see all of this on our website, anansigroup.com. We also have lists of the spaces. We could even pass this around. Do you want to pass it around? Um, so we defined, yeah, innovation spaces, technology oriented, um, have some interest in community building um, and are open to collaborations in some way. So pretty broad definition. I'm sure we're missing a whole bunch of them, but the nice thing is this allows us to, what well, one thing we're interested in doing is drawing APIs from things like hackerspaces.org, the Fab Lab network, um, the, if you're familiar with the tech hubs like Impact Hub, which is a community, it's like a collaborative uh, co-working space that also teaches some programming and uh, computer skills and things. So that's one of the things we're working on. Um, and then also potentially creating a wiki or a repository of information to help out with um, connecting all of these different movements that are all in the same vein with similar philosophies. Would you like to add anything? Um, no, actually. So. Yeah, so that's what we are working on. And um, right now, I think we'll make a short introduction about uh, spaces and how we work with spaces and what are our concepts of spaces. Uh, I'll be Actually, I'll begin with the Indian spaces and how they work with and how the uh, maker moment or the hacker moment in these spaces and how their perception of spaces are. Um, I'm Chinmay. I work with uh, Indian Spaces. Uh, I'm based out of Bangalore and uh, work with a lot of open groups in Bangalore and um, otherwise as well around the country. So, uh, hacker spaces and maker spaces are fra fairly new concepts for us, though. Uh, we have had collaborative community spaces from a long time. We've had artisan spaces. We have had uh, rural innovation spaces. We have had spaces where these um, people come together as a community and work towards something or building something or uh, building an economy uh, out of it. But 
uh, as defined as hacker spaces or uh, political, uh, sorry, activist spaces or even maker spaces are fairly new. Uh, when the West defines maker spaces or hacker spaces, it just comes down to a set of machines or it, it comes down to uh, building an open community around it. So it's uh, fairly different for us because uh, we are new to the concept of uh, getting people in the urban areas, at least, to come and democratically talk or speak to one another, work with one another. So uh, it's always been like someone does things and then someone, uh, the rest follow. That's how it went. So this is something that is happening with the Indian spaces. So when you're speaking of Indian spaces and when you're looking at hackers, uh, sorry, What's it, what's it? Spaces? No, hackerspaces.org. And when you look at the hackerspaces that are out there, and when you go there and see in the Indian spaces what hackerspaces are, they're probably co working spaces in the end, or uh, spaces which are doing technology but not necessarily getting people together and working like a hackerspace or like a democratic setup. So that's, that's how our perspectives have been until now. And that's how we culturally have defined it. But there are two different things, rural spaces and urban spaces. In the rural spaces, there's more community, but they have no idea about the structures. They, they have no idea about the movement. They have no idea about the accessibility. or uh, So uh, they have no idea of the tools or even the names. So we've had uh, some history with that angle and this angle as well. So that's how it's been in India. We're going to do introductions yeah. soon. Ah, yeah. Cool. So my name is Bilal, and yeah, I, I hear you a lot on how um, people may have these ideas about what this word means and how some people are already setting up these community spaces without calling them by a certain word. <clears throat> and uh, I'm really happy to see this map sort of help people recognize each other for what we are and maybe even understand the core principles that unite those urban spaces and those uh, spaces in the suburban and the rural places. And uh, we're having these people from Basra come who also have a very different perspective on these uh, types of community spaces. And I think um, I'll like my introduction to be very simple and it's going to be kind of silly. But um, if you could just take a look to your right or left and introduce yourself to the person that you're next to. So I'm going to look to my left. Hello, my name is Bilal. Hi, Chinmay. You can ask where they're from. From Berkeley. From India. Okay. Where are you from? And what I'd like you guys to ask, oh, excuse me. I let things get out of control really fast. All right, one second. Yeah. Hello. Sorry, we're going to interrupt your conversations that you just started. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's really exciting. Sorry, guys. What I would like, oh, <laughs> really briefly, wow, look at this go. This is great. What I would like you guys to do with this conversation, if possible, is, is really briefly, if you can, ask them what they dream of. Right, like, well, something that they want to do, something that they have in their minds that they wish they could be creating or they wish they could be doing in their future. And then see how you feel about it. And that's it. And then I'll pass on the mic. So, also, there's broken glass right here, so don't sit on the ground, please. Or if you want to sit on the ground, sit on the ground on that side. Um, broken glass over there somewhere. Yeah, there's, broken. Oh, there's a glass that broke over there. Okay, so and that was a so just really briefly, really quickly introduce and try to try to concisely share something that you wish for in the future. And then for me, what I really love seeing is that these spaces take that energy that we just unlocked and turn them into systems and structures and tools and sharing to help us help each other. And so with that, that's that's basically what I've been doing both in Michigan and in the Middle East. Uh, but yes, dream, and I'll pass on my mic. That was me. <laughs> Willow. Okay, so I'm Willow. Uh, I 
founded a space in Seattle called Jigsaw Renaissance. Uh, it recently closed. No so that's, yeah. Um, but I've been a part of hacker and makerspaces all over the world for, I don't know, seven years or so. Um, and the thing that I dream of is that we are able to establish these spaces while maintaining our, our political uh, advocacy, we'll call it that, um, while also welcoming new people in. I think that's a really interesting tension that is worth building futures on. Hi, my name is Helga. I'm on the board of a hackerspace here in Germany and work for Make Magazine. And what I dream about or what I really want to achieve is to um, make hacking or making really accessible, not like accessible for those people who already have a lot of time and have a lot of money and who want to go to a hackerspace, but also those people who right now have good ideas, but are like, ooh, I. I don't fit in a hacker space, maker space, whatever. Hi, my name is Oday. I am from Iraq, from Basra. I have a hacker space um, called Science Camp. We established it before one year. We have uh, two caravans with uh, two CNC, three axes, and four axes, and some tools. We have <coughs> uh, seven members in our hacker space uh, with um, uh, several uh, co other members. Uh, uh, we are seven co-members with uh, the owner and member, Dr. Uh, Norris. Uh, I am pharmacist, but I am leaving the pharmacy, leaving the pharmacy as um, as work, not uh, as sign. Uh, sorry, not as science. Uh, we like two things: uh, the, uh, the fund. Uh, it's our in, from our own. Uh, and uh, the legality we look for uh, from uh, our gov government or any foundations found in world which uh, can prevent uh, any disrupt or any mis um, misunderstanding of our work. Thank you. Hi all. I am Dr. Nawaz from Iraq, the founder of Science Camp Makerspace. Uh, as my uh, friend Uday said, we are running this makerspace over uh, a year. Uh, we are seven co-founders and more than 14 or 15 uh, members. Uh, we try to make change in our community uh, throughout the science and making. And uh, there are some challenges in our work, uh, which is the legal situation, especially in... Uh, we have several devices maybe used with... become clear with the and uh, we work with the Ministry of Science and Technology to uh, uh, insert the term maker space or hacker space in the law of uh, technological incubators so that's it uh, I'm Ben <coughs> sorry Ben um, I'm one of the um, founding members of Counterculture Labs, a uh, biohacking space in Oakland, California. And initially I was only interested in this space because of a specific project I was working on with them, um, which we started before we actually had the space. But um, I've worked in academia and in industry, and actually I, more than any other space I've been in, I see the potential for this space to allow us to do projects that would not fly in academia or uh, get funding in industry and that we can do some of these things which I think are valuable but we just can't do anywhere else. Uh, that and there's a lot of potential for people who want to learn biology um, but for one reason or another going to grad school is not the right path for them. Um, I think the space actually could be a very valuable alternative education pathway. <coughs> Hi, um, I'm Christoph Leib, um, founder of uh, VIOS, that's the Virtual Institute for Open System. And we are building communities, incubators. I'm co-founder of Fab Lab Zurich and Atelier in Sandkasten, that's the same thing in uh, St. Gallen, also with the Fab Lab part. And um, in fact, I'm a silo uh, breaker for collabora uh, collaboration convinced that the real fun stuff is already is always happening on the borders of uh, 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 of organizations uh, <coughs> above the silos so I really appreciate this initiative uh, to build up something like uh, like each silo 
uh, because that's the danger of maker spaces that they're getting introverted, that they should have an ambassador reaching out for other for other organizations, enabling the physical and the virtual collaboration to democratize intellectual property and, uh, uh, and knowledge to collaborate in interdisciplinary uh, uh, projects. Hello everyone, I'm Amber, I work for Christoph, so here to give you an introduction. Um, my wish would be, we're actually now just currently um, s um, building a space for IoT communities and we're working together with the Impact Hub in Zurich and it seems that they're a bit risk averse and that, that they've got some inhibition to kind of build up even more spaces because they've been already expanding in Zurich and so my wish would be just for them to have more, um, more to to dare more to say, okay, let's just try, let's just be agile about it and see if it works or not and just kind of have have more courage, I would say. Yeah. Um, your turn. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. My name is Paul Mushane. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya, and I work at a space known as the iHub, which is an innovation hub. So basically, the iHub was set up ten, five years ago, and the, it's a place that attracts geeks, uh, bloggers, it attracts also university graduates who have an interest mainly in tech, but uh, for historically it has been involved more in ICT, that version of tech. It's just, Uh, before for some time it's been in it has mainly concentrated on software and mobile tech that that type of tech but it's just recently it has gone into other areas such as uh, there is actually a uh, space that deals with hardware hacking and uh, there are also the initiatives that are working on making products on wireless technologies so, uh, apart from that, is there anything else you'd like to know? Okay, thank so you. you. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you. Hi, I'm Oliver. Um, I love interdisciplinarity. I work with uh, Christoph and Amber, so you know a lot already. And uh, I also f frequent uh, FabLab in Zurich. I also help to set that up. And uh, the Fab Lab is, uh, has grown uh, to about 400 members uh, in about two and a half years and is facing a couple of challenges. And uh, I believe, as I can hear, many other maker and hacker spaces are facing the same or similar challenges. And I believe that networking is very important to learn from each other to solve those, help solve those. Yeah, hi, I'm Thomas, also from Zurich. Um, I'm a member of the Fab Lab too, but uh, otherwise I organize the Internet of Things meetup group there and the 3D printing meetup group. And it's a good way to informally gather people that are not in touch with the movement yet. Hi, my name is Geraldine and I manage a community of different kinds of spaces across the world. I started working with some different spaces in Africa like the iHub and a network called AfriLabs a couple of years ago and I uh, also helped run a conference here in Germany called Republica and thought I'd try to connect the two and out of that the idea was born to create this community of spaces that include hacker spaces and maker spaces um, and so-called innovation hubs, as well as more commercial spaces as well, like startup incubators, and sort of trying to find commonality between different people and spaces that are trying to build local communities, local solutions, even though they might come from different corners of the internet, but yet might have some shared philosophy as well. And uh, we've been doing that for a couple of years now, and part of our sort of activities, what we do is is that we believe in convening physically and coming together and trying to create meetings like these. Um, so we have like 10 people here at camp together and have a bigger like annual meeting at Republica each year with about 50 
uh, representatives from different spaces, but also in other corners of the world. And so we do a lot of virtual collaboration and knowledge exchange, but try to create possibilities where people come together, connect uh, with other people and share. And yeah, so I'm really excited about this and I think it's really great work, what you're doing and sort of complements each other on such an awesome level because you find these spaces and then we try to bring them together and do something cool with that. And I hope that that's just going to keep expanding. That's my wish. There you go. Hi everyone, my name is Njeri. I'm from Kenya. Uh, for the past two years I've been running a programming school in Nairobi that has had an evolution of names. Now it's called the Dev School. Um, but I'm not doing that anymore. I'm moving on to do schools. So I've ran um, classes in different spaces in Nairobi and Juba, South Sudan. And I've been having conversations with people about um, setting up an innovation space in Juba. There's a really cool guy in Berlin called Steve, Steve, Steven Kovat, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, we've had lots of conversation and not much action um, because none of us is based in Juba, but we're trying to to see if that makes sense. I'm just really interested in being part of this conversation. I've been part of several spaces, but not as someone managing it, but as someone who does stuff there and uh, runs a bunch of user groups. And yeah, I just want to hear your thoughts around the whole concept. And Bilal, I dream of chocolate, ice cream, and happiness. Hi, uh, I'm Dinas. I'm from Budapest, Hungary, a country between Ukraine and Austria. So it's right in the center of Europe between West and East. And uh, we have a hackerspace since uh, five years. And uh, what we are trying to create is, uh, for example, such uh, kits for electronics that could be used as an infrastructure. So you could say it's a meta kit and it can be used for low-cost spaces. And uh, one example is, for example, of a soldering station controller, which can be powered from notebook power supplies, which can be come by every part of the world for really cheap, if not free. And what I wish is that every space could access the infrastructure so that people can start hacking because usually knowledge is uh, easy to to transmit over the world, uh, but uh, physical infrastructure is harder to get by, especially if you're on a low budget. And uh, I think it's the parts uh, with low budget that needs more infrastructure so that their potential can be can be used for good things. Hello. Well, hello, I'm Johannes. <laughs> okay, um, I was managing one acre space, been now involved with several. Um, I usually try to knit together the hacker spaces with the community they physically find themselves in because they tend to isolate themselves from it. Um, what I dream about, I dream about preventing people from shooting themselves in the foot and the head at the same time with technology. <laughs> Um, hi, uh, my name is Aimee. Um, I just went to a gender inclusion workshop, so uh, my preferred pronoun is she and her. Um, but uh, I am generally interested in um, uh, language, uh, so uh, I think that uh, there are some projects out there that really need international collaboration and uh, like a, my dream would be that like this kind of meeting space with a lot of different spa uh, uh, people from all over the world could be like a network to work and um, support some projects that require that. Hello, I'm Claudio. Um, I have nothing to do exactly with Hackerspace or FabLab. I realize it uh, listening uh, at you. Uh, I'm working uh, through technology, and I was just uh, curious about this uh, phenomena and this kind of organization I was developing. My field of interest normally are um, freedom of speech online, uh, protection between sources and journalists, uh, or understanding the dynamic of the um, tracking phenomena of the online user. So uh, I'm just here to learn. Hi, uh, I'm Ankizis. I'm from Garoa Hackerspace. It's the very first hackerspace in Sao Paulo. We have been running for about four years and now we have about 15 hackerspaces across the country in Brazil. And I'm glad I have been seeing the hackerspace movement growing up in Brazil. And I hope to see also around the world as well. So I'm here to just to hear experience for everyone and share experience as well.
Hi everyone, my name is Roy from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, formerly affiliated to the Fab Lab in Nairobi. Um, currently building 3D printers um, as a business. Um, building the 3D printers from electronic waste. Um, still connected with the, with the maker spaces scene. Um, trying to leverage appropriate technology um, and trying to you know, solve problems with that directly around in the communities that are affected. Um, another thing that I do, and I'm hoping to get insight from this whole um, event, is trying to set up maker spaces in schools, uh, but the challenge being that they need to be low budget. So trying to set them up in secondary schools, trying to tap into children's creativity, um, get them making things from an early age, and solving problems as well. Uh, but the challenge is to make it as affordable as possible. So. If you want to talk about that, I'm happy to have that conversation. Hi, I'm Mel. I work at the Technical University in Berlin as a lecturer and researcher, and I'm also working as an IT consultant in international aid projects. And in both areas, I quite often feel like technology is more intimidating or creating dependence instead of actually empowering people or giving people the opportunity to create something new, to actually understand the systems they're working with. And I feel like makerspaces are um, one way where this is reversed or where something different happens. And uh, these are probably also the two areas I'm, I'm most interested in to see more research, do more research. And I think, yeah, especially in the international or different makerspaces all over the world, to look at what different concepts exist and is this empowering, is this inclusive, is this something where people actually are confronted with technology and not just using it and still depending on other people and services. Hey, I'm Alex or Merlin. I've been um, on the board of a couple different hackerspaces in Ann Arbor and San Francisco and involved in a few others that are like workshops and non-profit and for-profit um, tech shops and other uh, open and non-open spaces. And I'm really interested in the, how these interface with each other and how a space can provide for itself and also help its members provide for themselves in a way that is not gross i.e. like finding a way to be sustainable with work that is creative and exciting and teaches you stuff and is also promoting sustainability in your community. Uh, and so like, I think some of these problems need to be... I'm always an advocate of keeping things as open and accessible and uh, non-commercial as possible. Uh, and it's lately become really interesting to see how commercial and non-commercial or like partially commercial things blend together as well as like uh, a lot of people are building tech solutions to problems that maybe could be res resolved with things that aren't so techy and are more easy for everyone to build. Um, so being immersed in that world kind of makes you very uh, narrowly focused. Uh, I'm trying to broaden my view and see how we can all work together. <laughs> My dream is a public glider, a uh, public transit, uh, transit infrastructure. So, like, you should be able to go to work on a glider instead of a car. It would be awesome. Thank you all. Um, so, who did everyone get a chance to share themselves and their dreams? No. All right. They're, they're the observers, I think. So. Um, we're really thrilled to gather everyone here together um, to talk about how we can collaborate better and make all of these dreams come true. Um, one of the, I think before we launch into that, which is going to be more of an action oriented, let's come up with specific things and then possibly volunteer to do them discussion. Um, I think we wanted to talk a little about the culture because one of the things that we hear a lot about um, hacker culture or the maker movement, in particular maker fairs um, and related things with that, we see a lot of particularly North America and Western Europe and everything related to that. And so I've got a great story um, from some MIT engineers decided to build an excellent composting toilet for rural India. And these were folks who'd grown up in the States and they designed this brilliant composting toilet 
and went to, I think it was the Northeast, to a rural village. They installed a couple of these toilets. Everyone was happy. They came back a couple months later and found that no one had used the toilets and they were instead filled with sacks of grain. And they asked the villagers, what, what's going on with this? We thought we gave you toilets. And they said, yeah, we already have toilets. We just go, you know, in that, those latrines over there. But we haven't had any great, um, like, bug and water tight boxes to store our grain. So they were happy to get that. Um, the engineers weren't particularly thrilled. But I think this is the kind of thing that happens a lot um, when you have, you know, Sort of more altruistic minded folks from countries that have a lot more infrastructure um, trying to design things for cultural contexts that they're not particularly familiar with. Uh, and so I know of a lot of folks in the hacker and fab lab maker movements who want to be designing things um, and helping save the world in some way, but maybe aren't sure how to get involved. So I guess if you have anything, does anyone have anything to add to that or to the question of what kind of culture, what kind of culture would we like to see more of and how is your culture different from um, other parts of the hacker movement worldwide? I have a very recent um, thought about this because, you know, when I was much younger, I would have walked, I, I traveled the world and I saw these people building dinosaur synthesizers and I was like, oh my God, this is, a, this is like a plastic dinosaur synthesizer. This is so cool. This is so awesome, right? And then I grew up and then I thought, oh man, you know, creativity and being able to have an impact to their creativity is a really lovely idea. And uh, the country that I grew up in, uh, America, doesn't really uh, have very many problems. What would happen if the maker movement moved over to where my family's from in, in Iraq? And then I started thinking and talking and communicating with people in Baghdad to set up this makerspace in Baghdad, hackerspace called Fikrspace. And, and then what we would do is we would um, dodge car bombs and go to our workshops and build segways. And then I started judging even these things and being like, how are these things related to solving the problems in our world? And like, why don't we all like start using our tools to think about the problems and we must do this. And I got into this very reactionary state where I'm like, the world sucks. Everything is horrible. Look at it. Look at it. Steep yourselves in the, like the, the mucky mire and like ah, bleed out goodness, you know, force yourself to bleed goodness to counteract the awful. And that's no good. And so very recently I, I started counteracting even that, realizing that everything is a uh, action and then the reaction and hopefully coming more closer to the middle now. And of course my ideas will change, but thinking about, you know, don't go save the world, save yourself. What, what do you really enjoy doing? Maybe that's, uh, there's a reason why I'm born into an Iraqi family in the States with these connections to two worlds. And, uh, I can, I can use this to be uh, to, to highlight the joy of those things and the loveliness and not be so much about I must grit my teeth and do uh, and, and martyr myself for some some beautiful thing and I think uh, rather than having one Gandhi that nearly starves himself to death and unifies and does all these beautiful things I think everyone can be like a tiny light instead of having a bunch of spotlights out in the world if everyone was a tiny light following the, their, their joy and their bliss and the things that felt really natural and comfortable and, and took a lot of self-care and realized that, you know, when they're out in Juba or when they're out in their countries and they're like, wait a second, you know what, I'm tired and I want to take a break and I want to go to camp and I don't want to go to a talk about how to save the world. I want to go to the lake and actually going to the lake. Anywho, this is slightly like a little bit of a, a response and I'm sure I'll come even more to the middle later but um, I, I know that I've been, technology will save the world, must relax. Technology will save the world, stop fighting so much. Let's play and make synthesizers, no. But uh, yeah, hopefully this sort of swinging will settle into somewhere in the middle where we don't uh, try to squeeze our heads out to figure out what the good thing to do is and we really feel and intuit what we would like to do with our time. And that's one difference that I'm coming across. I think you, you mentioned something uh, really important and this uh, goes uh, goes into the, uh, the in direction of uh, 
of life, pur life, uh, uh, life purpose because uh, we saw a lot. Uh, we see a lot of people coming uh, coming up with uh, with ideas, with brilliant ideas, and uh, they they want to 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 make this uh, product or project a reality to, to synthesize a dinosaur and uh, and and everything. And we started. Uh, we started to ask them the question. Okay, fine. We love your di dinosaur, and we'll help you with your uh, with your dinosaur to make it uh, to make it happen, and so uh, and so on. But how do you see yourself within five years? Within ten years? What are your? What is your intention? Your intention is not to build uh, to build a synthesizer dinosaur. So what do you really want to change? And if you ask yourself this question, uh, you realize that you won't succeed uh, just for your, uh, for just for yourself, just in collaboration with other people, seeing also the sense in this uh, uh, in this project or product to come uh, to come real because it fits into their life and in f it, it and it fits into their uh, uh, their big uh, their big uh, big plan. And this just doesn't happen within uh, uh, happens within silos. So you really need to to to, to fly uh, to uh, to fly above and uh, collaborate with other people sharing the same uh, the same ideas. One of the things that I figured out while we were doing the um, Space Federation, which was uh, so. Everybody knows about hackerspaces.org, right? Which is where a bunch of these spaces are, are listed. And it tends to be the more, like, spaces which are comfortable being political, which also means that the list can be dramatic sometimes. Um, but I, for a while, I worked on a thing called the Space Federation, which is about linking together hacker maker co working spaces, specifically in the US, so that we could share 501c3 status, so like nonprofit status, in the same way that we share a milling machine. Um, I used to joke that I was, I was fine getting my hands into a motorcycle engine, but I was terrified of paper cuts, right? And so uh, one of the things that we figured out was that the, the plurality of these spaces is a part of the strength. And trying to say that they're all the same thing is actually kind of problematic because they're not at all. Um, but recognizing that and supporting them for what they are and seeing what some spaces can do and others can't is rat. That's the main lesson that I walked away with. Yeah. Um, or if someone else wants to share. No. Okay. Let's move on to action. Um, I'll, I'll pass the mic around. Uh, tell me one thing that you want to work on, one specific thing, and then we will probably split into uh, two, three things that are mostly what you desire as a group and go ahead and talk about those things. Yeah? Uh, what I would really like to do, and I've had this concept for a while, is uh, for me, I like having um, maybe every so couple of months having a mission statement for my life, the things that really motivate me and being clear about my motivations and realizing when they're coming from myself or when they're being socially pressured or when I'm afraid for money and just setting up my mission statement and then having a bunch of keywords that re re like uh, refer back to my mission statement and then a bunch of how words, so like tactical things that I'd like to do that relate to my mission statement. And I think it would be really, really amazing if we use this outreach process that we're doing to find the spaces to ask people like what are they, what are their motivating, um, what are, what's motivating them what are their keywords that they would like to use as like a cloud to define the space of motivations or their interests? And then what are the practical, tangible things that they're doing? Uh, so that um, if we have this data and it's organized in a, in a specific way and the, the, the tags were uh, connected enough, that we may find each other and support each other. Um, and so that's just one of the things that I thought would be really great to do. I'm just here to listen and help. Yeah, actually, simil similarly, um, I don't have a specific thing I want to get done here, but I would love if I hear something exciting to help out with um, some projects. So, um, yeah. Well, uh, it depends on what it is that I hear. Um, what are my strengths? Um, Yeah, sure. 
locally or uh, Uh, my idea yes uh, my okay my idea is uh, the science will solve uh, more than um, eighty percent of um, um, problems uh, maybe uh, also have the social problems because uh, the unknown person make trouble, while the known person is um, out of troubles. So uh, if we make a um, uh, science museum or science fair in every country, um, it is a very good idea to um, knowing the children and the adults, what about the life, what about the science, what we can, uh, how can we use the science uh, to serving our self and uh, others. This is my idea. Yes. Uh, I think we can help by uh, uh, how I can uh, and science. Uh, if people get uh, learn well, if they uh, get the ability to make their ideas into projects and then a product so that will be uh, so impressive and will make um, a big change in community mainly so it's so general but but i think that's the main thing okay i didn't get your question is it what you want us to do here right now or in the future <clears throat> okay, um, uh, in the future, perhaps long term, it's on robotics and uh, AI. It's an interesting area because I can see that there are new uses in various parts of uh, in the robots or AI will come mainstream. So I see that that's an interesting area. Um, so maybe for now, it's people who have that interest. I'd like to collaborate with them and meet them. I think maybe it might be interesting to have something like a, a gathering point a database for real challenges. Like, I don't know, you mentioned, for instance, the 3D printer you're doing out of scrap electronics. And oftentimes I see people trying to find some challenge, something really useful to do. And, and then they do an iPhone cover. And then I think it would be interesting to have something more useful to them to learn on. Uh, let's all okay so everybody we're gonna take 30 seconds to think quietly about a one sentence that you can present to the group in a quick fashion okay so 30 seconds think about what challenge you're going to present that you want help on right either today or in the future okay everybody ready okay one sentence or less sorry this is driving me nuts I love you all but oh, wow go for it I want to have one place where within 10 years children can go and tell I've got a problem and what should I do to have this solved, what, uh, how do I learn? Mine is very much aligned with that. Um, bringing that mentality of I can do it, I can change things to kids as well. Um, I'd like to discuss here this uh, blog post on the gentrification of the maker movement that you might have read. I would like to join in that discussion. May I, I'm sorry, break your because I, I made some notes to so just come in. I wanted to say a couple more things that I would concretely like to do based around this network or this community that I mentioned earlier. Um, so I work in a world where there are still so many cliches in these Western countries that we work on about what um, places in developing countries look like and what abilities people have there to innovate. And, uh, and I think we totally have the ability to turn that around in a really short time. And, and like you said, you know, working on AI issues and robotics, I get all these 
weird cliches from different ways. I get the, oh, but people don't even have like houses to live in there. Why would they be working on robotics? As much as I get, why would you be working with those kind of people? They're not poor. They don't really need your help, right? And around that, there are a whole, cat like, whole sea of weird uh, perceptions and cliches. And I would really like us all to think about how we can work together to help clear those up quickly. Because uh, I think it can totally be done by helping showcase like some of the fantastic work, for instance, that you're doing in the spaces that you have at uh, conferences like this in media in different ways. I would also really like to think about how, I mean, my this community I have and the sort of platforms that we have and the stuff that we're putting out like on GitHub or other places um, is very small and I would really like to find ways of seeing how we could just expand that because there's so much knowledge that worth, is worth sharing. We had a great conversation earlier around policy for instance. In Germany there doesn't have to be a policy or law around maker spaces because it's covered with a whole bunch of other stuff but where you live explaining to your government what your space is and why it's not like a terrorist hub but something that you're trying to communicate uh, contribute to the community is a really important thing and getting the right legislation around that is also really important hardware imports etc so finding a place where we can share working policies and experiences of lobbying governments for that kind of thing but as well as finding what you said a space where we can share knowledge around open products and resources that we're building in our centers and um, to kind of connect to people in different spaces if you need like assistance or information with a product that you're working in um, or even finding different ways of sharing like how to sustain a place and how to create revenue around that I think those are all things that I would really really like to think about with you how to create a knowledge repository that's open and accessible and sort of broaden this sort of small thing that we're trying to do. Thank you. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, what I'd like to learn is, in the future, is how technology makes sense in the Kenyan and South Sudanese context, because that's where I work from, and not just replicating what's happening in Germany or in the US and bringing it to Kenya, but figuring out how it makes sense for us. I would like to have something like a hackerspace exchange program, so we have a human fabric to technical infrastructure. Uh, like I said, language, I would love to visit all these different places, you know, and like have people <laughs> visit us and speak their language and would, yeah, that would be great. So I've been visiting all these different spaces and I would love other people to do that and also to find a way that they can get funded if, and their visa is taken care of if they're coming from other places that are more difficult. From, for our, from a global perspective, in my opinion, it would be important to have a, a global repository of information so we can share our experiences. Uh, each country has their own specifics in terms of politics, economics, social issues, etc. But we are all part of the same movement, I mean, bringing technology, etc. So having at least one place that we can share information and share experiences and make questions and help each other would be a, the very minimum that we need. Um, I actually, um, currently we're trying to further iterate our designs for the 3D printer. So I'm actually located inside that wooden structure, so if you want to help, we can come talk about that. We're building. I'm building the printer as we speak, uh, so that's one thing. Another is um, I'd like to have a conversation around building an inclusive makerspace. Um, what I'd really like to see is to s uh, more systematic research in different areas around makerspaces. I think there's so many topics within this maker movement: production, collaboration, education, um, international development whatever, there are hundreds of buzz buzzwords and I think um, I would love to see, uh, we already talked about this Anna and I yesterday, if there was a um, research group or a, a journal or an open journal or a conference and if we would manage to establish something like that and what I can offer is um, university infrastructure trying to get funding um, using the venue, whatever is linked to that. Uh, I want to talk about economic sustainability and ways that hackerspaces and communities can c provide for themselves and for their members for financially in ways that build rather than diluting their values and culture and using the mainstream interest. Like we've all seen sort of the maker movement going more uh, mainstream, I guess you could say. Uh, 
and sort of a bit more commercial and co-opting that for good. Um, I would see, uh, so from what I see from the discussions, uh, there are two main topics that emerge. One is sustaining, actually three. Uh, one is hackerspace exchange program. The other thing that uh, was mainly discussed about was how to sustain these spaces and make them more inclusive. And uh, the third one was help clear perceptions and cliches and share experiences when it comes to legislation. Uh, sorry, when it comes to uh, law or uh, your personal experience of setting a makerspace in a different country. So, uh, are, are we good to discuss these three things as a group? A fourth thing is maybe how to find projects that are similar to ones you're working on, yeah. um, whether that be, um, you know, science promoting science education or 3D printers from e-waste. Um, we were thinking a bit about this and aren't sure how to do it. So, but like hashtags, maybe let's talk about it. Yeah. Repeat the first three things again. Sustainability. Uh, second is hackerspace exchange program. How can you facilitate an exchange program? Third would be to share your experiences, with, whether it's law or other sort of experiences of setting up. And the fourth one is what Anna just said about... Um, so find, finding like-minded people and projects to work on within this global network. Okay. This... Okay. Great. Are there other groups we've forgotten? Or uh, something else? There, there are a bunch of other things, but uh, I think largely this is what we want to... Okay. Great then. Um, so, those... You could either, we could do two, this two ways. Uh, I think we've past exceeded our time, so I don't know what your plans are. Uh, we could uh, have a small... Yeah, but we could have a small discussion here. Yeah, so we could just set up one, two, three. One is sustainability. Two is how you want to uh, document experiences. Three is exchange programs. And um, four is about where you want to put a central repository. So we could have one, two, three, and four here. So we could go to the most interesting uh, group for you and then decide upon how we take it further. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is, yeah, we're already 20 minutes past. Can I see? Sorry. Uh, okay, so decide that in your group. Like, is this something that you're you're going to get each other's contact information and you're going to talk about it later and that's what you're going to do? Or does everybody have an hour? Yeah. Figure that out because if we do it in plenary, it's not going to work. So I, I will set up hack pads for all the t uh, different groups. So you can just use that to c continue your discussions. Is that good? Yeah, and we'll, if on our website, can you write that up somewhere large? Yeah, we'll put the wikis on the website once we are ready with them. Okay. Uh, can you o open open up like text edit or something so we can show everyone the what? So we, we can show everyone the, our, our website. Yes. So our website, and we'll pass that around, is anansi, A-N-A-N-S-E, group.com. And we'll have a wiki set up here, so you can all go and look at that. They make that really big, and then... And you'll put it on the wiki, or the hackpads on the wiki somewhere? Yes. Yes. We will do that. Cool. So I'm going to be in the exchange program. <laughs> so each one of you can get to one, two, three, and four. Yeah? Exchange. Oh, then I'm going to go to the experience. Okay. I see how it is.